Tommy still swarming after the Steelers win over the Chiefs. Mike Tomlin had a clear message to his team in the locker room, something Antonio Brown decided to post on Facebook Live. Ryan Clark in the house. Good to see you after a late night on Sports Center. Thank you for being up early with us. That's not bad. You guys give me the first, like the first hour off. You know, so I could come clean it up after y'all mess it up for well, me. I, 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 come, I come to save Molly. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Be humble. Shut your mouth, number one. And number two, I'm always very proud when I see him because he's one of the few people in this business with my schedule. He's working after midnight, <laughs> and then he comes on in the morning. You that's might what, work more than me, bro. That's what I got to do come a week from now. You love it, though. You love the NBA. But let's sometimes, stay focused on sometimes, this. Sometimes. Steven it. Antonio Brown posting this to Facebook Live, not edited. You never know what the coach is going to say. Do you have a problem with it, posting Mike Tomlin's speech? Huge problem with it. And I know Antonio Brown. We communicate from time to time. Got a lot of love for him. Got respect for him. He's one of the top three receivers in the game. You're smarter than that. You're bigger than that. And I, 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 it was just a very stupid thing to do, to be quite honest with you, because you don't know what the coach is going to say. Mm -hmm. It's in the locker room. It's post-game. That it's in the locker room for a reason. It's not for everyone to see. And it's a violation under no circumstances. The reason why I use the word stupid is because it wasn't intentional. I don't believe for one second that Antonio Brown meant for any negativity to emanate from this. Meant to put his coach in a position where it would compromise him. And the word stupid is appropriate because you weren't thinking. Mm -hmm. You weren't thinking. And you weren't thinking about the kind of impact. You don't think about what Tomlin said. You don't think about the kind of impact that's going to have on the Patriots who you play against this weekend. Mm -hmm. You don't know what he was going to say and how that would have resonated. Mike Tomlin wasn't aware that you were Facebook live in him, okay, which is unfair to him. Yeah. It puts the coach in a compromising position, not to mention who knows who else could have walked by well, and what may have people. come out of their mouth. It's insensitive. It's not wise. You're a professional. You're a grown man. He's so much smarter than that. It was a dumb Thing and it, to do. it was also ironic, right? Because you hear coach in the background saying, but you don't got to let him know we're coming. And as he's saying that, there's Antonio Brown letting them know they're coming, giving them bulletin board material. What did you say when we were listening just now? Before we, before, uh, you just said. I'm trying to be humble. I, f I forgot. You, Even you, said, I don't right, you <laughs> said, you got to love that though. Like, <laughs> yes, Mike Tomlin, who wouldn't want to play for that guy? He motivates everyone. Tom doesn't look bad. Here, Tomlin comes off here. He looks good. And as a fan, I'm glad, I'm sure fans are glad you got to peek behind the curtain and hear the kind of thing that would, like, who wouldn't want, you know, the, the coach you probably most want to play for because he creates that atmosphere of excitement and motivation and togetherness in the locker room and all that. But while that's going on, Antonio Brown, imagine this is Odell Beckham Jr. Antonio Brown, who seems to be a team guy and everything, is so narcissistic that he is completely missing the message, making it about his Facebook live post, which there's, as Molly says, no time to edit, and is completely undermining everything Coach is saying. Well, I mean, here's the thing. We live in a generation now. It used to be when, when you played a game, you couldn't wait to hear from your homeboys. You couldn't wait to hear from your parents, <laughs> for, from your wife, from your kids about how great you played. Well, that's not what it is now. Now it's more exciting to get validation from thousands and millions of people you do not know. Right. And so everything about to these guys is about branding. We want to be a brand. We want to do these different things. And so I'm not surprised Antonio Brown did it. And, and Stephen A saying that that it was stupid and that it wasn't intentional. To me, that's the problem because he's so self-absorbed. Right. He's so about what he's doing. He's so about Antonio Brown that it's not that he's missing the message that coach is giving. It's that he genu genuinely does not care that the message is being given. He's so involved in his bubble that he doesn't even know what's going on behind him. He's not paying attention to the damage that it can cause. When I was with the Steelers, when Coach Tomlin would be talking and cameras would come in, this is what you would hear in the locker room. Woo -woo! And you know what comes next. That's the sound of the police. And the reason being was 
he didn't want and we didn't want people to know what was going on between us, what was going on between family. If you watch Coach Tomlin give an interview or give a press conference, you've never heard anything like that because it's for family, because it's for us. And he would always say, because I would ask him, hey, coach, you know, why don't you let people, you know, see how personable you can be, see how funny you are, this and that. And he would say, because I'm not going to give them a window into my soul. Antonio exactly. Brown gave them a window into his soul. I know Mike Tomlin, that. not as well as you do, but I know Mike Tomlin. I've spoken to him on many occasions. I'm a reporter. You ain't never heard me repeat anything without his permission. You understand what I'm saying? If it's a private conversation, it's a private conversation. If I understand that as a reporter, how do you not understand that as one of his players? He is in the locker room talking to y'all. Mm -hmm. That's for y'all. And I had Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg, you know, he watched the show, loved the show, been on the show, just text me talking about his behind the scenes. That's what we want to see, blah, blah, blah. Stop that nonsense, Snoop. Love you, but you're wrong. The fact of the matter is, is that again, if the coach is speaking, and he does not know you're taping him. That's a problem. Yeah. You cannot allow yourself to, you can't put your teammates, your team, and Snoop your coach right, though. in Wait, that one, position. One, qu one question, though. Is there any chance that he did know? Because he did post a Facebook Live after the game last week, and Tomlin jumped in at the end. Is there any chance? I know it looked like he was hiding that Tomlin could have been aware of that. Well, I don't think so, and I don't know. I can't necessarily speak yep. to whether he knew or not. Yeah, I don't, obviously not, or he wouldn't be saying things that you never heard Mike Tomlin say before. And Snoop is right. We, as fans, as media, want to consume this. This is what we want. There is value in it. But that doesn't excuse Antonio Brown for violating trust in the locker room. But that's why and the fact that, is wrong, because Snoop well, saying well, Antonio that, Brown is right. No, no, it's not that he's right. It's that there is value in what he did. But from his point of view as a member of that team, right. it undermines but what it's, they're trying well, to do. It's Antonio, value for Antonio Brown, right. not value for social the Steelers media, organization. This is the issue with social media. This is an instance where they don't even know that it's going on. That's, that's, that's the worst. But it's even worse than that, because even if people do know that people may have their Facebook Live post going at that moment, it becomes like a fly on the wall. It's so ubiquitous that you kind of forget it's there. This is how documentary filmmakers get a lot of great footage, right? Even though people are aware they're being filmed, if it's on all the time, you yeah. kind of Reality TV. forget about it. And so there's danger in that. This is one step removed because he did it in a way where obviously Coach didn't know he was doing well, it. And, and that's the, the issue. Yeah, Snoop wants to see it. Fans want to see it. Like you said, it was cool to see Coach Tomlin be something we had never seen. But that's only value, like Molly said, to Antonio Brown, right? Because the fans love it, and now you get more followers, and now you get to get the validation. Oh, Antonio, you're so cool. I'm so glad you did this. I'm glad to see this. But that's not what Coach Tomlin wants. And we've gotten out of a world where team is the most important thing. And I, I do agree with you. If number 13 in New York does this, it's a lot bigger deal. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ways he would be talked about, the ways his character would be attacked would be different than this. But for me, nothing Coach Tomlin said was wrong. Nothing about it I have an issue with. I think the issue is he said it in a setting where he felt like it was between friends. It was yep. between family. Don't yep. let him, now, don't let him see knows. us coming. And you have to let your team let know you if you're doing that. That's not fair to do to anyone. He did take it down, though, so someone obviously got to Brown. Ryan, we'll compromise the coach. With us in just a little bit, but coming up. This sucks. It was an unbelievable play call. Last drives, Alex just drove us down there, fourth down after fourth down, making plays, making plays. The momentum's getting on our side and then just get our jugulars ripped out because ref felt bad for James Harrison falling on the, the ground. Um, it's ignorance. The ref number 51 shouldn't even be able to wear a zebra jersey ever again. He shouldn't even be able to work a foot locker. Shouldn't even be a Foot Locker band like from Matt locker. too, Max. I like Foot I do too. Yeah. I've got a great kick coach. Yeah, I like it. Probably not like yours. Uh, Max, yep. should holding have been called? Absolutely. Yes, and I don't know what the argument is. Like sometimes you see a ticky-tack call away from the play where even though technically it's holding, you say it didn't affect the play. It's a big moment. You don't have to enforce that really like that. You're looking for something. But here, <laughs> you know, Fisher's arm was around Harris's neck, who's, who's going for the quarterback. <laughs> I mean, he, maybe he sacks the quarterback. Maybe uh, Smith feels pressure and, and alters the throw. I think there's a, actually, in reality, a very high degree of probability that that alters the play. So since it was 
definitely, clearly, technically holding, mm. and there's a very high degree of chance that it alters the play, I don't know what the argument is against it is. <clears throat> it was not the wrong call, but it is an arbitrary call. Sometimes it's made, sometimes it's not. No consistency. There's no consistency with that particular right. call, Max. I'm a Steelers fan, as we all know, and I'm happy that the call went in their favor. But in, in, in the interest of fairness, I must confess that James Harrison, when he's going after the quarterback, he usually has a lower center of gravity and he rushes the passer in such a fashion that that head neck area is usually relatively low. And as a result, you can find yourself in that situation like our offensive tackle Fisher did. And, and a lot of times it does not get called. Yes. So considering the fact that the two point conversion would have tied the game, mm -hmm. that it's a playoff game. You do sort home of get the impression, even the home field of KC, you do sort of get the impression that the referee dictated the game right. as opposed to allowing the players to do so. Did you and, see that video and, just yeah, then? I, I just saw, I saw it, I saw it several times. What I'm saying to you is this, I'm not questioning that the right call was made. I'm saying there are many instances where there's nothing consistent about that call. It either happens or it doesn't and nobody sweats it. Right. So you leave it to them to decide it on the field because that secondary still had to defend against their receivers and they didn't do it the first time. The second time they obviously took down the pass and it ended up what it ended up. I, even though it wasn't anything wrong with the call, I still don't believe it's a call that should have been made in that situation. If I'm the quarterback, Alex Smith, I'm upset too because of the call. It's the timing of the call to make it at that particular time with the two point conversion that could have tied the game. Most of the time, referees don't want to make that to be the deciding call right. of the game. Now, is it the right call? Yes, it's the right call. But one thing about but Eric Fisher and also playing against a guy like James Harrison, James Harrison is a smaller defensive end, outside linebacker, who is about leverage with him. So he's a bull rusher, too. That's why Fisher didn't allow him into his body. Now, what James did, which was which is excellent on his part, is he turned his shoulders and then he fell. Now, when he fell, that drew more attention because Eric Fisher jumped over the top of him, the arm was across the neck, and it looked like he pushed him. So as far as that was concerned, it was the right call for the referee. Now, with Travis Kelsey, come on, man, you got to handle it a little bit differently because your game wasn't up to par. He dropped three out the game. You, they were expecting you to dominate in this game, and you dropped too many passes, had the penalty that cost that you. That was such a stupid penalty. Everybody on the sideline yelling at you, and you seemed to put your head down instead of elevate your game because you were needed to win that particular game uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, as far as the play is concerned, kudos to the referee because most of the time, like I said, that hand sitting on that hip, and they're not throwing that flag. But for them to throw that flag and to say, yeah, it was holding to pull him back and to be the deciding factor, that's what changed everything in that Kansas City. Travis Kelsey dropped three passes, got that 15 yes. yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Yes. You did more damage to your team that put y'all in a situation, call. then put that y'all in a situation where you needed the two point conversion. Right. Had you handled your business appropriately, you wouldn't have cost your team points because you're talking about anywhere from six to 10 points he cost his team because of the plays he made. I hear you. Yeah. you know, if what you do alters the play and it's against the rules, playoffs or no playoffs, maybe especially playoffs, gotta blow that whistle, man. Gotta Let's move it forward now to the AFC Championship games.